now take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here's Reverend Martin. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. Hi, my name is the Reverend Nathaniel uh, Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of Los Angeles. I like to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, but never good night and never ever uh, goodbye. I hate goodbyes, but that's personal trauma. Uh, we're located at, as again, in here in Los Angeles, 8916 South Main, and uh, we are worshiping together with our sister church, the congregation of the Shiloh Missionary Christian Church, uh, pastored by my good friend and who has been a, a hero uh, all through last year because she uh, overcame and, and triumphed over the coronavirus. And she's coming back in good health and pressing on and lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, even more so because we never closed the church down. We kept on praying, kept on fellowshipping and the Lord blessed us we went to see about our sick we didn't forget about them amen we may not could go in the house but we took bleach and all and the groceries and stuff and set it on the porch and then uh, we went in and had prayer with them on first Sundays and washed our clothes and our hair and everything when we come out and the Lord bless you just got to know what to do and so now all of our members that came down the, uh, with the coronavirus have recovered and are healed and are doing well and uh, praising God and we're praising God along with them and uh, we are trusting God to give us the deliverance that uh, is on the horizon now with the uh, new Biden administration uh, uh, in the ascendancy or in, in place uh, suddenly there's plenty of uh, vac vaccines available and testing is available and as I said all last year that's what was going to have to happen if we were going to, able, going to ever be able to reopen uh, the country again we had to get a dependable standardized uh, test and get a dependable standardized uh, vaccine and of course we have uh, three but that's just a, a, an embarrassment of, of uh, uh, riches. Uh, the, this offering that you're viewing, uh, this presentation is entitled, It's Time, and it is geared more towards social justice, social activism, uh, rather than uh, mere theology. We're trying to put some foots on our prayers. You know, Jesus didn't just preach, he also walked about and went about uh doing social justice actions like healing the sick open the blinded eyes hmm? yes making the lame walk yes uh straightening up folks who've been bent over with uh infirmity many many years lifting the man up at the pool uh of bethesda all of those were social justice action because they restored to the community and restored to the to full uh, participation in the society people who uh, had uh, been marginal, marginal, uh, marginalized due to uh, illness the impact and the effect and the consequences of illnesses that they could no longer afford uh, the woman with the issue of blood had spent all of her money and uh, but uh, when she got to Jesus she was healed hmm? and became a useful member of society uh, again. So never say that Jesus didn't do, uh, didn't believe in social justice. He went about it his way, and we got to go about it our way. But don't never listen to the naysayers that say Jesus was not interested uh, in social justice. Why, if he wasn't interested in social justice, why would he come down here through forty-two generations, uh, leap into the womb of the of the virgin? Uh, be born and, and, and lay in, a, in a, a manger in Bethlehem and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, grew up and uh, began his ministry for 12 years. Go up on that cross, suffer, bled, and die. If he didn't believe in social justice, he never would have done that. Hmm? So, yes, there's very much social justice in the gospel. And uh, I know the slaveholders and those that love slavery and uh, the, the racists. 
among us. They can't stand to hear about social justice. But uh, you got to preach it anyhow. Because if you don't preach it, uh, the story will never get out. It will never be told. People never realize uh, what a great friend we have in Christ Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry, as the songwriter said, everything to God uh, in prayer. Our uh, uh, I didn't prepare that. Also, so in dealing with social justice, I got to set this up before I read. Uh, social justice must always include uh, an environmental component, which you can see every day is becoming more and more uh, vital, imperative, and necessary, not only in this country, but all over the world, because uh, for generations, for, uh, since its founding, uh, this nation has, has uh, uh, polluted and it has uh, had no regard to the water supply and to the, uh, the needs of others. And uh, now we find that water is going to be the next war, not going to be over oil, it's going to be over water, because it's, you got to have clean water to drink. And more and more of the uh, 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 water tables across this nation are being polluted. Well, right here in Inglewood, we've had fracking for years, and they always claim, well, no, we're staying away from the water table. Those people are trying to make money. They don't care about no water table. Uh, and, and once they release those uh, chemicals and, and, and those explosions occur, you cannot control the extent and the depth or the reach or the endurance of those, uh, of, of those explosions. They go where they go. And uh, if they should pollute the water in here in Inglewood, all the people that are responsible for it are going to do is file bankruptcy and move on. And Inglewood will be stuck. Not only will Inglewood be stuck, but, but the uh, surrounding communities uh, will have a terrible time because uh, when you can't drink the water, you can't wash with the water, you can't cook with the water, you can't do no, none of the normal things that you do uh, with water, include, uh, include take a bath, wash your face, wash your hands, go swimming. None of that if you pollute the water table. And so quite naturally, uh, we got to have environmental justice. Uh, <clears throat> the the uh, environmental pollution in the pipes of the poor people in uh, Flint, Michigan, is being replicated all around, all across this nation, as uh, old infrastructure gets ready to to uh, go the last mile of the way and burst. Why well, there's going to be a terrible uh, infrastructure disaster. So uh, hats off to the. Uh, the president for uh, looking ahead and at least seeing what is about to occur and starting to make some moves in that direction uh, before the general calamity or catastrophe uh, uh, occurred. And not only water pollution, but uh, look at the pollution of the industrials that are uh, daily released into the atmosphere. Uh, not just from the factories, but uh, from the jet planes. Jet planes release all kind of manner of uh, pollution uh, into the atmosphere. You think it's just going to stay there and be cool? No, it's going to uh, uh, eventually float back down into our lower atmosphere where we live. Certainly it is. And uh, all of those, those uh, sources of, uh, of pollution, even all of the the uh, pride that we take in watching our rockets go off into the uh, atmosphere there, heading toward other planets. And uh, one might ask the question, well, somebody sooner or later might ask the question, what authority, by what right, uh, by whose law do we have a right to go and take our pollution up to uh, the planet of Mars? What right do we have to take our uh, deadly diseases that may be uh, in, on these uh, various uh, 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 various uh, spacecraft and instruments uh, that may be unleashed up there in those uh, pristine uh, uh, areas. What right do we have 
to do that. What right do we even have, have to put the flag of the United States on the surface of the moon? Why, that moon is universal. It doesn't belong to the United States of America. The moon belongs to the universe. All right, let me get off my soapbox. And the other component of, <laughs> of reparations is always going to be the economic component because you cannot ha live in a capitalistic society uh, without having the requisite uh, uh, finances in order to uh, meet your obligations, pay your bill, and uh, have a little something left over to take mama out to get some ice cream after a while. I'll take the kids out to... Uh, somewhere you can afford certainly not Disneyland but uh, this is the capitalistic system and uh, because of the ravages of, of, uh, of two, uh, 250 years of slavery we have to have reparations because that account is still on the books that ledger has not been settled uh, it may have you may have sought to throw the book away or hide the book but uh, as the Bible says, uh, the nail out of the wall shall testify and cry out against you. And uh, until America reckons with that uh, period of its history, of, of the enslavement, the constitutional contradiction, as they call it, uh, it's going to always be this deadly uh, confluence, this deadly exposure of this uh, of uh, unrepentant. Uh, guilt that the uh, white supremacists still suffer uh, and uh, we must uh, uh, because it is moral because it is right because it is just America must pay reparations to the descendants of the slave I didn't say how I said he must see just because of the passage of time quite naturally the further we get away from the the event or the incident, then the more problematic it becomes to find the, the uh, descendants, uh, direct descendants or the indirect uh, descendants of uh, uh, the slave, the slaveocracy that held sway uh, here in this country for 250 years. And not only that, but then after following that, uh, following the brief success of Reconstruction, then came the dark ages of this in this nation. Uh, the days of, of uh, convict leasing, the days of loitering, uh, arrested for loitering, uh, the days of uh, you had to have a job by in January of every year or else you were uh, uh, subject to be arrested by the local sheriff, local constable, uh, the local uh, law enforcement authority in that area. And so we must therefore have a, a uh, reparations and economic component in our desire, our work for social justice, which brings us to our text. A lot of words before you can get there. Deuteronomy chapter 15, picking up the reading of verse number 12, it says these words, reading out of the King James Version of the Bible, And if thy brother, an Hebrew man, or an Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee six years. Please get that, six years. Then in the seventh year thou shalt let them go out free from thee. And when thou sendest them out free from thee, thou shalt not let them go away empty. Thou shalt furnish them liberally out of thy flock and out of thy floor and out of thy winepress. Of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto them. God was concerned, therefore, with the end of slavery. He didn't want you to turn people out with nothing. Since they came there with nothing and they had benefited you by their seven years of work and toil, six years of hard labor, and the seventh year getting ready for the year of Jubilee in the uh, uh, Jewish tradition, the Hebrew tr uh, tradition. Far different type of slavery from what was practiced on these Western Hemisphere, uh, North American shore. Don't let nobody fool you. You cannot conflate uh, that chattel slavery, that brutal bondage, that harsh uh, uh, slavery that uh, uh, the uh, the uh, people 
imposed upon the uh, people that they stole from the continent of Africa and the European descendants enslaved them or forced them into slavery and separated families. Uh, the first uh, arrivals was, was split up and separated so that uh, when they had children, that the children couldn't learn the traditions and customs and religion and the identity of their native land. Instead, they were stripped of everything and just like a tabula rasa, uh, they were given a name, a European name. They were given uh, a Europeanized uh, religion, although uh, Christianity originated uh, on African shores. The white man bastardized it, bastardized it, uh, adulterated it, polluted it, uh, confused it, and uh, used many of the uh, scriptures in the Bible to try to justify his enslavement of a people who were formerly free and not uh, enslaved. That brings me to a consideration of uh, a story. I hope my tablet will bring it up here. Right quick. Oh my goodness, it's gone. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Tamara Tamra Lanier. Uh, Tamara K. Lanier is her name and uh, she's been trying to get the uh, Harvard University to release the remains, the photographs, the pictures of her ancestor whom we all see many times. Uh, his name is Papa Renty. He was a real human being. He had a real family. Uh, he was a, an African uh, descendant an African prince and uh, who endured slavery and died in slavery uh, but and his descendants are, are, are yet alive and so uh, the uh, University of Harvard which was a a, a slave sponsored uh, university meaning that it was uh, founded by slavery slave money from slavery it was financed by the sale of slaves and uh, it was the school, a university, the college uh, built here in the uh, colonies to educate the sons and the daughters of the slave owners. I'm trying to say that pretty nicely. And uh, Harvard, uh, Yale, Princeton, uh, Brown, and all of those Ivy League you call them Ivy League college. They're really not Ivy League. They're slave universities. And they were built by the hard work and of these slaves, like Papa Renty. And uh, I bring that up because uh, last week, or this week rather, the uh, it was revealed that the U Penn University and... Uh, Let's see, it was Penn University and another university, Princeton. Penn University and Princeton University. Get this now. For 36 years, they have, well, was it 36 years? Since 1985 to right now. They have had the remains, mind you, the remains of uh, the children and of the el remains of the 11 victims of the police bombing of the MOVE uh, compound in Philadelphia back in May 13, 1985. Uh, the uh, city of Philadelphia was trying to evict the uh, MOVE people from uh, their residence that they had taken up there in Philadelphia and in so doing uh, the Philadelphia Police Department under Lieutenant uh, what was his name? Frank Powell uh, sent a helicopter over the uh, move compound and dropped a bomb on that uh, settlement and in an effort to force the people to come out. And quite naturally, as the people were coming out, they were being shot. And so with no sense in coming out and you're getting shot. So then... Uh, not only were the five children and the uh, six adults uh, killed in that uh, 
uh, in that inferno. But uh, uh, the entire compound where the people live, you know, like you uh, live in an apartment complex, the entire complex, 60 separate buildings were burned to the ground or burned and damaged so much that the people that the uh, authorities had evacuated before they began the uh, operation against the move uh, compound. People couldn't go, had nowhere to go. They didn't burn my house down, burn the apartment down, burn up all the clothes, burn up all the sentimental items, burn up all the identification, photographs, pictures, videos, all of that that the people may have accumulated in their uh, living, days of living in the, their, their uh, in their abode. It was burned up. They had nowhere to go. Uh, but long story short, the point where I was getting to was the remains were never recovered because they were born naturally beyond uh, recognition and everything. Uh, but lo and behold, Har uh, Mr. Allen Mann and a, uh, an anthropologist, forensic uh, anthropologist by the name of uh, Janet, uh, what is Mung, M-O-N-G-E, I think is a, a correct spelling, uh, have been using the bones of the children, two of the children, that perished in that fire to teach the anatomy class or to teach the forensic uh, anthropology class uh, in Princeton University and in, uh, uh, in Penn uh, University. And uh, how this came to light was that uh, somebody got wind of it, that the bones of the remains of the people had never been, uh, uh, you know how, the, re, if you got remains, you got to contact the next of kin or get somebody to claim the body and you have to release those remains to them. Uh, even though it may not have been much, but the people would have had something to bury. But no, in this case, the authorities never uh, contacted anybody, any of the family of uh, John Africa uh, or, or any of the other uh, members of that family. Uh, I think, uh, I can't get the lady's name right, she's still living. Now, John Africa's wife, uh, she was, she of course had related the story of what happened, but now, uh, that day on the 13th, how they were, how the police uh, treated them. Uh, but then, now you come to find out that uh, this further insult of not releasing the remains uh, to the family. Uh, were five children, uh, yeah, were five children, I think they said it were 11 people, so it was five and six uh, people that perished total in that, in that uh, attack, assault by the police. The police are always doing these type of silly, uh, inhumane, barbaric, uh, military style assaults on civilians. See, that's the type of policing we got to get away from. That's why uh, they always so quick uh, to use deadly force against uh, black people because historically in, in, in slavery the police were able to use lethal force or were authorized and were given carte blanche uh, to use whatever force was necessary to bring slave back to the plantation or to to uh, instruct, as they say, a slave. And uh, uh, the police don't want to give that type of uh, tactic up. They were never uh, 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 empowered to use that against their own, which is why you see such a disparity between when a, 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 a unit of the police goes out to arrest a white person and when that same unit goes out to arrest a black person. Uh, they reason with the white person, they talk with them, or cajole and all of that type of thing. And uh, you've seen fights, I'm sure you've seen the videos uh, on uh, YouTube and on Facebook and on Twitter. Why the, there's a total brawl, I mean just a brawl. And the police will never pull this gun and shoots uh, the person because that person is white. But now a black person could be uh, complying and doing everything, but he still gets subject to get body slammed on his head. Uh, 
and uh, treated brutally and uh, uh, hog tied uh, in the prone position and all these type of things. And so uh, that is what we have the heavy lifting that we are moving forward now to uh, to to begin is to reform, change, rewrite. That's why they said defund the police. You don't you don't pay it. You don't uh, fund the police. And they go buy C four, drop it on the house, huh? You don't fund the police. And they go buy a tank and knock down the wrong door at the wrong neighborhood at the wrong address, and uh, they want to be. They want you to say, "Oops, oh, we made a mistake." No, you can't. Oops, them kind of mistakes, brother. Uh, because of the loss of life, uh, the loss of property, and uh, our people have been treated with such disrespect down through the centuries, and the police certainly don't want to stop that. The white supremacists don't want to relinquish their pri their privilege uh, that they have enjoyed. But it is high time now to try a new form of policing. I mean, the police don't come out there when you got uh, mental health. How, they haven't worked it out yet. Every time you hear about the police going to the mental health, a person with a mental health problem, a person with a mental health wind up dead. So, so the police are not cannot do that type of uh, intervention and several other types of intervention. Maybe that they don't do uh, uh, traffic stops no more because when the police do traffic stop, the traffic stop escalates from uh, 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 an expired license tag or a, uh, 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 a uh, deodorant or whatever, uh, hang, for air freshener hanging from the mirror, and then, but yet the black person winds up dead. Hmm? Or uh, injured, like they did uh, poor Mr. Uh, 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 Blake there uh, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where the police officer shot him in the back seven times, and the... Uh, the uh, powers that be said no harm, no foul, and that, and that officer skinning and grinning with his white face back at at full full pay and back uh, at full duty. So there's a great change that's got to overcome, got to take place in this country. And as we get ready to wrap up, uh, we want to ask you to continue your prayers because of this uh, great uh, work that is before us. Uh, but we thank God we have His His presence, His cosmic companionship, as uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was fond of saying. On this journey, we have cosmic. In this fight, we have cosmic companionship. The road is rough, the road is long, and the, the brutality that a lot of us will have to expose will will pro, uh, equal or surpass that which was visited upon poor brother. Uh, George Floyd, but we must engage in the fight if we ever want to reach the promised land of a better uh, uh, police presence and better police activity in our neighborhoods. I continue to pray for my brothers and my sisters who work at these thankless tasks, uh, whether people don't want to give them, uh, put them on full time, they don't ever want to let them know what hours they want them to come to work. And so that keeps the people on pins and needles. They're afraid to go do something because the phone might ring and the, the people at Walmart tell them to come and go to work on this ship. And they don't, don't let them work eight hours. Don't let them work a full 40-hour week because they don't want to put them on uh, full time, that type of thing. Those people are telling you that they don't want to pay you. And if people don't want to pay you, why are you trying to work for them? If they don't want to pay you, my brothers and my sisters, Shake the dust off of your feet. Make that move while you're young. Go find you someplace else to work. And tell those people, take that job and shove it. If they don't want to pay you, don't work for them. We out of here, Doc. God bless. <coughs>